Hey everyone, now let's see the second big category of conversion rate optimization, which we call pop-ups and other overlays. First of all, why do we use pop-ups at, at all? Uh, I think the most important reason is that they are the best tools to take initiative of the customer journey. This is how you can basically nudge the users very slightly or more aggressively, depending on what you want, towards to the desired direction. And um, there are multiple types of pop-ups, as you can see. Um, often we also consider full screen side messages as pop-ups and they are all based on the same overlay technology. The main difference is how assertive they are. Of course, full screens are the one the, that blocks the fully the whole page. Nothing is working and um, it commands absolute focus. Why? Sticky bars or teasers are more subtle. They can just run and be there and you can use the website while, the, uh, while they are there. So they uh, provide a more elegant, less aggressive way to communicate your messages. Now let's see, what are the rules of using pop-ups the right way? How you can not annoy your visitors? The first and most important is to have the right message. What is the right message? Well. The number one rule for the right message is that the customer has to care about the message. If the customer doesn't care about your message, it's like putting lifting at a pig. It might look better, but it will still be a pig. Having the right message to the right people is what we call the customer message fit. If our messages overlap with the customer's needs, that's when we have CMF, customer message fit. This is when we exact, this is when the customer feels that this message and this offer is exactly what I need. And of course, if your messages doesn't meet with the customer needs, then well, the customer will just say to your message that who cares? And they will leave your site without buying and feeling that this is not what I need. So this is about showing the right message to the right people. And of course, the challenge is that your customers are different. The most important differentiator, I think, is the customer awareness. How far, how deep they are in their own customer journey when they visit your website. From the very beginning of they are even unaware of, your, of, of a problem they have to the fully aware when they already know basically everything. Let's see a couple of examples. What kind of messages resonate with the different user or customer awareness stages? For example, if someone is already a product aware visitor and they know what your product is about and they are contemplating buying your product, then having this classic smart discount pop-up is usually a good way to turn them into customers. But this is definitely not the ideal message for all visitors. If the user is still very much in their early stages of their visit, they're just uh, discovering what your product, your brand is about, then, well, this message can feel very much like uh, this lady on stage. So let's see what can be ideal for an early stage or problem aware visitors. Well, for example, if they are just reading your blog about uh, relaxing, then probably providing them information, ebook or some other um, hooks or some other lead magnets can be often more effective than offering a 10% discount to buy right away. Or if they are already solution aware, for example, and they know what type of product they need, but they are not sure about the right product, then probably helping them choose the right product and nudging them uh, to discover more of your products is probably a better idea than trying to rush the purchase and close the sale right away. And of course, if someone has already decided, they already know what they want to buy, uh, they are returning visitors and they, are, they, they just want uh, to buy something and, and they are just back to finish the purchase, then again, no need to offer them a 10% discount and to subscribe. So for returning visitors, for example, this is a much better alternative to just help them continue where they left off in the previous session. Also, if they are product aware and you want to keep them on the site and encourage them to finish the purchase, you have still options beside giving them a discount. For example, you can just remind them of all the products they previously viewed or added to the cart. Or if they already uh, subscribe to your newsletter and get this discount code, it usually it's a very useful best practice to remind them of this discount code on, uh, until they actually come and finish the purchase. Okay, now let's see a couple of best practices to maximize conversions. First is that it's very useful to keep your offers relevant and, and increase somehow the fear of missing out. 
if your offers feel very generic and the customer feels that, oh, this offer will be here next week and or next month as well, it's, it's usually less exciting or less desirable. So just simply um, packaging, for example, your messages into some season, seasonal flavor is a very good uh, way to actually boost the efficiency of your messages. Or using countdowns to decrease fear of missing out It's also a very well-known and working tactic. The next advice is to break your pop-ups down to multiple steps. Instead of putting everything on one screen, it makes sense to just break it down to very simple, easy steps. On the first page, all you need is a commitment that they are interested. Just They should just click on the button, save 10%. On the second screen, you can ask for the email address. And on the third page, you can offer them this discount code. And you can also already help them um, start their journey by recommending some product, probably your most popular products. This is the psychology behind one of the most powerful tactics, the, what we call the Trojan horse, which was developed by Jason K. Williamson, a friend of mine. So here on the first page, you just ask for an email address. On the second page, do you want to upgrade your discount to 15%? Yes or no. If they click on yes, then you ask for the phone number. So instead of just asking uh, for an email and a phone number at the same time, you just separate it into multiple steps. And this will usually improve the conversion rate of these pop-ups by around 50%. And, and with this, you will definitely be able to get much more email and, and SMS subscribers than just, again, asking for everything right away. Next, you should also use smart teasers. Smart teasers are things, these small widgets, which basically uh, remind the visitors of an offer uh, in a, a non-aggressive way. It can, they can be displayed before the pop-up is displayed. This is especially useful if you are uh, using your pop-ups in an exit in then mode, or they can be displayed when the pop-up is closed. Usually they have to improve the conversion rate of your pop-ups by around 15 to 20%. Again, one small hack is to delay the display of your closing X button. If you only delay it by just like two or three seconds, the customers will not notice that actually it's not there, but it will stop them with the automatic reflex of clicking on the X button without first actually reading your message. My next advice is that you're in your messaging, you should always try to go to use some kind of emotions. Your visitors are humans and as humans, they are more prone to respond to messaging, which contains some emotions. Adding some mystery to your messaging is also helpful, especially nowadays when a 10% or 5% discount is, well, it's quite generic. Often it could convert better if you uh, package it into some kind of uh, mystery. All right, so this is about the messaging. And of course, having the right message is important, but you also have to choose the right segment to target and trigger your pop-up at the right moment. Some messages are more ideal as, an, as a welcome pop-up, for example, and some messages are much better delayed as an exit pop-up or after, for example, scrolling down 50% on the page. One more advice is that you shouldn't overdo it. In one session, in one minute, there shouldn't be pop-ups appearing all over. But of course, if you run multiple pop-ups or campaigns, this can happen. Unless if you are using a, the user experience protector, which is a built-in feature of Optimum, to avoid accidentally overwhelming visitors by more than one pop-up. We always recommend keeping them in the normal uh, mode, or if you are want to be extra sure that none of your users will get annoyed by too many pop-ups, you can even turn it on the safe mode. So basically it's an artificial intelligence running in the background and making sure that your visitors will not get overwhelmed by messages. And so far, all these advices were about improving the conversion rate of your pop-ups, getting more signups, for example. But according to the data, more than 80% of the signups who require a 10% discount will not actually redeem this discount code. And there are ways definitely to have the user to nudge these to nudge the visitors to actually redeem this discount code. One technique is to use what we call coupon auto redeem. Basically, all you have to do if you are using a Shopify store is to turn this one on, and then when the user gets the discount, they will it will automatically be applied in their Shopify checkout. Uh, the next is to use follow-up campaigns for discount codes. For example, don't forget your 10% off. Using this discount code until the purchase actually happens is usually a good way to improve the redemption rate of your uh, discount codes by around 10 to 12%. And you might think that using a simple, easy to remember discount code like Shop10 is the easiest way to, turn, to, to make the users use it. Uh, the data says that actually using something more unique 
and generating, for example, automatically a unique discount code for every visitor is a much more effective way if you want to improve the uh, redemption rates. So these were the most important aspects of building powerful pop-up campaigns. And now in my next session, I will turn to the more advanced personalization tactics. See you there.